So in this video, we're going to upgrade to the RC version of Unraid 6.7.0 and have a quick look at what's new. So it started. The Unraid 6.7.0 RC series is underway. Now remember, this isn't the stable version, it's the first release candidate. So if you upgrade to this version, you possibly may find some issues. Now normally, as errors are noticed, Lime Tech fix things pretty quickly. But if you have a mission critical server, then only run stable releases. So there's quite a few people trying this, as you can see on the forum. And it's getting a lot of positive remarks. I've never heard of that saying before, the duck's nuts. That's awesome. It's a bit like the saying here in the UK, but we'd say the dog's bollocks. So I'm going to briefly go through just upgrading to this release candidate, and then we'll check out some of the new features and all of that 6.7 goodness. But before we go and upgrade, let's just have a look at the current stable version, just so we can compare later. So as everyone seems to be liking the new dashboard, let's have a look at what the current dashboard looks like now. Okay, so now let's go back to the main tab. Well, I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with this anyway. So while just flicking through all of these sections, what I like to do before any upgrade is I always like to upgrade both the plugins and the Docker containers. And that's because sometimes various things have been updated, ready for a new release of Unraid. So just doing it before the upgrade, this helps make sure that all of your plugins and containers are compatible before going forward. And all of my Docker containers, they're already up to date, so I don't need to upgrade anything here. So now I'm going to move on and upgrade from the stable version to the release candidate. And to do that, let's click onto Tools, and then go down to Update OS. And then underneath where it says Branch, we can see it says Stable. So we just click onto that and then go to Next. And that will put us onto the RC version. So now it's checking what the latest RC is, and we can see it's 6.7.0 RC1. So just click on to install. And that will download all of the necessary files for the upgrade. And so once everything's downloaded, all we have to do is click on to done. And if you can see here in the top left, it says reboot required. So now it's going to click on to main, then scroll down, and then just click on to reboot. And then OK. Then we just have to wait for the server to come back up and then we'll be running in the new OS. Okay, so here we are in 6.7.0 and the array is just starting. And the first thing we can see here is we've got some fancy new icons. And if you look closely, we can see that the encrypted disks even have a little padlock in the middle of them. And we've also got a different icon for an SSD and for our flash drive. And so now let's quickly have a look at what the old screen looked like and compare them side by side. Okay, well I think the new icons are definitely a good improvement on how things look. And whilst we're here, let's scroll down and just have a look at the bottom of this page. Well, there's nothing different here other than the new icons. So let's go and have a look at shares. Now, no new icons here, but there is a neat new feature for people running Apple Macs in their network. And that's Time Machine support by SMB. But to enable that, first we have to just stop the array. And then go to Settings, SMB. And then we have to set Enhance OS X Interoperability to Yes. Then after which we can go back to the main tab and we can restart up the array. And go to our Shares tab. And now when we open up a share and look at its options, under SMB Security Settings, we can do things like setting a time machine volume size and the option to export the share as a time machine share or a time machine hidden share. So a really useful feature for OSX users. So now let's have a look at the settings tab. And again, some really nice visual improvements here with some real nice icons. Again, let's compare it to how it used to be. Well, there's more color in the old version but I think the new version is definitely a really nice modern fresh look. Okay, so whilst in the settings tab, let's take a look at what version of Docker we're using. So now we're on version 18.09.1, as opposed to the stable version being on 18.06.1 CE. Okay, so now let's head across to the VM manager and see what version of libvirt and QMU we're on. 
So libvert is 4.10.0 and QMU is 3.1.0. Right, okay, so now let's go and have a look at what the plugins tab looks like. And again, more eye candy here with upgraded icons. Now, not every single plugin will have an upgraded icon, but I'm sure the authors will upgrade them as time goes on. So now moving on to the Docker tab. Now, one thing I noticed here is when a container set to auto start, it used to go blue when it was turned on to on, but now it's white. I think I preferred when it was blue because it was easier to see. Again, let's compare that side by side. So the difference is here in the new version, the on doesn't go blue. And also it seems like the new version, the icons are slightly smaller. So we can probably fit more containers on the page. Right, so now let's go and check out the VMs. And again here, I think the icons are a bit smaller than they used to be. So we can fit a few more things on the screen. So let's have a look inside one of the templates of a VM. Look in this Windows one here. And the first thing we can do here is we can change the machine type to i440fx 3.1. Now we're on the new QMU. But a really interesting thing is what you can actually do with the USB devices plugged into the VM. Now when reading through the release notes, I came across this part here where it said VM manager, remove and rebuild USB controllers. At first when I read this, I thought it was something about a pass through USB controller. But I think what this is referring to is when a VM is running, you can actually go to the template manager and you can add and remove USB devices that are plugged into the server. Now you can see here that I've got a Logitech USB unifying receiver. Well, I'm gonna start up this VM and not have this selected. And you can see the VM running here in the top right hand corner. And on the Windows VM, I'm just gonna to go to control panel, then devices and printers. So we can see when I plug in that Logitech USB receiver. So now with the VM running, I'm going to edit the template and add the USB receiver and click on update. Now, yes, there has been an error thrown up, but if we look in the VM, we can see that the unifying receivers actually come into Windows. So now if we press cancel and close the template, and then go back in and edit the template again, even though we just had that error, we can see that the USB device is actually here. So now let's just reverse the process and take out the USB device while the VM is running. Again, we get an error, but you can see here that the actual device has now been removed from Windows. And so that's pretty cool because we can assign and remove USB devices to running VMs. And the error doesn't seem to actually affect anything. It seems to only be cosmetic in the VM template. And maybe in a future RC version, we won't even see that at all. So we're now running Linux kernel 4.19 and we've got an AMD firmware update for Threadripper. And another big thing is now we have Bluetooth support in Unraid. Now, why do you want that, you may think? Well, it's pretty useful for Docker containers, maybe something like a home automation container. We can actually pass through Bluetooth to it, and then the container can use Bluetooth to communicate to Internet of Things devices. Now, I've been saving one of the nicest features till last to show you, and that's the new dashboard. So let's take a look at that now. And as you can see straight away, we've got a whole load of information here. At the top left, we've got all about the server, its description, the registration, and how long it's been up. And also there's a little icon here. You can see that I've already chosen an icon on my server, because mine's a full tower. But if you've got a different type of case, there's quite a selection here of what you can choose from. And you've got the option to select from many popular cases. Okay, so over to the right, we can see what's running on the server. As we could on the old dashboard, we can select from all apps just to the running apps, and the same with the VMs as well. And over here we can see the motherboard and a feature I rather like here is to be able to see the date of the BIOS so we can tell which version we're running. And CPU information. As you can see here, we can see the temperature straight in the dashboard. That's rather nice. And of course we can see the CPU type and the CPU load in real time. And to the right of that, we can see all of our shares. And scrolling down, we can see our memory usage here, as well as our flash log and Docker image usage. And moving down again, there's information about our network interfaces and our UPS. At the moment, there's a small bug with the UPS details because it doesn't show the actual wattage load on the UPS. But Bonnie NL has already said that he's onto this and should have this fixed very soon. 
And then at the very bottom of our dashboard, we've got all the details about our array. I was a bit worried when I first saw this saying my array has three warnings, but it's only because three of my disks are quite full. So nothing for me to worry about. Okay, so that's how the dashboard looks. But one other thing you can do with the dashboard is you can actually minimize any kind of part that you don't want to see. All you have to do is just click the little arrows and it will minimize that section. So if you really wanted to, you can actually minimize every single section that there is. Well, that's a brief overview of Unraid 6.7.0 RC1. Now, I'm sure I've probably missed out things that are in this release, but I think I've probably covered the main things. Now, it's only been out for about 24 hours this release, so if I find out more things about it, then I'll be sure to update this video. And I'll be updating this video as more RC versions come out in the future. Now remember, it's only recommended to run RC versions of software, so long as you're not running something mission critical. Now, if you're finding you are having problems, it's really easy to roll back. All you do is go to Tools and then go to Update OS and then click on Restore. And then at the top, you'll see it says you need to reboot. So then just reboot the server and then you'll be back into the previous system. Now remember guys how much work goes into making Unraid and if you like this new RC version then don't forget to just drop a note on the Unraid forums and let the guys know that you appreciate the work that they put in. And also if you like this video and found it useful then please hit up the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always a really huge shout out to all of my Patreons. Thanks guys for all of your support. It's you guys that really do make it possible for me to make these videos. Well, it's getting pretty late over here, so I'm going to get some sleep. But whatever you're up to, guys, I hope it's good, and I'll catch you all in the next video.